Last Sunday, Sonny Gray surprisingly came back from the disabled list and got the start in Houston. The former All-Star looked sharp as he was on a strict pitch count, but looked like his time on the shelf did him well. Tonight, Sonny gets his start, and he'll be facing the Reds in Cincinnati. The Great American Ballpark plays small, and Sonny will have to watch out for a Reds team that has lots of power. It's game one of three. A's Reds Interleague Baseball is next. Well, stop number three on the road trip for the A's is the Great American Ballpark here in downtown Cincinnati. That is Anthony DeSclafani. He is coming back from the Disabledus to make the start for the Reds. And Sonny Gray will make his second start since coming back from the Disabledus. So that's your pitching matchup. We got Interleague Baseball, National League Park. It's the A's and the Reds coming up on CSN California. Hey again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Sonny Gray, second start from the DL. And Ray threw 69 pitches in his first start. And it uh, looks like tonight there's not going to be any pitch limitations. He's going to be able to go as long as he can. And it will not take him a long time to get loose because it is hot and humid, unlike last Sunday in Houston. But for Sonny Gray, pitching last Sunday was great, especially to see him keep his pitches down. That's something he was not doing in the previous part of the season for him. But he's throwing a good curveball. He's throwing a good sinker, keeping everything down. In this ballpark where the ball carries well, he needs to do the same. Let's just hope with no restrictions tonight, he can pitch deep in the ball game. A's can go to the back end of the bullpen. But Sonny Gray is very important to this ball club, especially for the rest of the season. And the Cincinnati Reds are a dangerous offensive team. Middle of the lineup, you think of those veteran guys, Bruce and Phillips and Votto. All good hitters, but it's yeah. Adam Duvall who is leading this team in home runs. 17 home runs, and whether or not the ball carries well here, doesn't matter. He can hit about anywhere, and you're seeing some hit on the road. But Adam Duvall has really taken over to this ball club here and doing some special things for the Cincinnati Reds. If you have power in the outfield of the corner position, you're doing quite well. Duvall is adding that for the Reds. Got in the middle of the lineup with Votto and Phillips, other guys you talked about, but adding also Duvall to the mix really makes this a very good ball club, especially especially from the hitting side. All right, so the A's are trying to get their first win of the road trip, and the ball should be carrying this weekend here in Cincinnati. Now stick around. When we return, we'll check in with the A's pregame live studios, and then we'll come back to Great American Ballpark for the ball game.
CSN California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. It's back, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Outside the Great American Ballpark, lots of beautiful statues. That one to Johnny Bench. Pretty good catcher. Yeah, Hall of Fame. You can do it all. So we are in downtown Cincinnati, Great American Ballpark, Interleague Baseball, and the game time weather for tonight. It's presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. It's warm, 78 degrees. It's very humid and boy it's supposed to really heat up in the mid 90s tomorrow is what they're telling us it rained most of the day here in Cincinnati but mid afternoon though it rain went away and it has turned out to be a very nice night warm and humid but very comfortable so the A's winless on this road trip they'd like to change that and have a good weekend of baseball here in Cincinnati. Let's look at the lineup tonight for the Athletics. Coco Crisp will lead off in center. Jed Lowry's at second. Steven Vogt will catch. The good news is both Valencia and Davis are back in the lineup. Yonder Alonso hits sixth. Simeon seventh. Max Muncy just up from the minor leagues. He will hit eighth and play right field. And Sonny Gray, your pitcher. Anthony DiSclefani. We just call him AD because he is making his first start of this 2016 season. Been on the disabled list, so just activated for tonight's game. He's primarily a fastball pitcher. He will throw curveball, slider, and change up, but he likes the fastball. And it's just a question of uh, how far Brian Price, the manager, will let him pitch tonight. But Brian is very happy to have his scheduled opening day starter in the lineup tonight, even though it is June the 10th. Defensively, the Reds look like this. There's some familiar names. We talked about Adam Duvall in the open of our show. Tyler Holtz in center. Jay Bruce, the veteran, is in right. And Eugenio Suarez is the third baseman. Zach Cozart at short. Brandon Phillips at second. Joey Votto at first. Tucker Barnhart is your catcher. So Coco Chris steps in, and we are set for baseball. That's Brian Price, the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. And correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, but he and Bob Melvin are very, yeah. very good friends. They go way back. They went to, both went to Cal and of course Brian Price worked for Bob Melvin as a pitching coach for the Arizona Diamondbacks and you talk about friendship when Bob Melvin was fired Brian Price, Price said I'm going to. Mm. And so he left with his good friend Bob Melvin and his pitching coach for the the Reds under Dusty Baker took over as our manager. So the first pitch of the game to Coco Chris from Anthony DiSclefani is a strike. So we're underway. Swinging and a miss. This ballpark right on the banks of the Ohio River. In fact, we can see the Ohio River from our broadcast booth. Looking out over right field. I think that's the reason for the humidity. <laughs> it doesn't help, that's for sure. And unlike PNC Park with the river behind right field at that stadium, I don't think anybody's going to hit this river. No. Because I walked out there today. And <laughs> you hit one in the water here. Yeah. It's going to be the longest home run in the history of baseball. Fielding Culbreth is calling balls and strikes, and he is the crew chief, Reynolds, Gonzalez, and Bucknor. And a foul tip, not caught by the catcher, Barnhart. So Coco Crisp still alive. Coco at 221 with five home runs and 22 RBIs. If De Sclafani was hurt, he's not throwing like he was hurt because he <laughs> is throwing a good fastball. That last curveball surprised that Coco even got the bat on it. A little bit inside, but a good pitch at 95 miles an hour. Tough break for DiSclefani. He had a very nice rookie season. He made 31 starts last year, won nine games. And he came into spring training, and the Reds said, hey, you're going to be our opening night starter. That's how much they think of this young man. And there's a line drive base hit right center field. So a good start for Coco Crisp. He's been struggling, and he has a leadoff single. Let's put hope playing outdoors is going to help the athletics. It's a 2 2 fastball. It's supposed to be inside, left it out over the plate, left it up. And the old saying about a good fastball, regardless of the velocity, if there's not a lot of movement, it can be hit hard. And even with two strikes, that was hit hard by Coco Chris to start the game. So Coco's aboard, and here's Lowry. Hey, Kipe, the A's won't be no hit for five or six innings no, tonight. No, I no. think that's a good point because they were in Milwaukee back-to-back -back games. 
The seventh inning, the first game, the sixth inning, the second game. So tonight, Coco takes care of that with the hit in the first inning. The numbers for Lowry: 307, a homer, 19 RBIs. Vote to follow. Suarez, the third baseman, in on the grass. The finishing on Desclafani. So Red said, "You're going to be our opening night starter." In his final spring training appearance, he gets hurt. Strained left oblique. And he's been out for two months. Yeah. So he missed a lot of time. He made five rehab starts to make sure he was healthy. And so the Reds are thrilled to have him back. And they have not been good on the pitching side this year. So getting the guy that is going to be your opening night starter back, a young pitcher, that's a big deal. So see how he looks tonight. Anthony DiSclafani, 26 years old. The left field Duvall shading his eyes looking right up into that sunshine. He's got it. But boy it has been a tough year for the Cincinnati Reds and their pitching staff. Highest ERA in the majors at 5.65 most home runs allowed in the majors most walks in the majors. None of that is good. And their bullpen has been historically bad. Their bullpen has an ERA nearly at seven so. That makes it real tough to win ball games. Their offense, there's enough there. Oh, plenty. There's enough there. Pitching has been the big issue. And you always kind of look back. Oh, what, what happened? Well, they traded Johnny Cueto from last year. Remember they traded Mike Leake. They got Adam Duvall from the Giants for Mike Leake. So that's turned out well so far. But that's two pretty good pitchers that were in your rotation last year, not in it this year. More action for Duvall near the line, but it'll drop foul. Well, pitching is key, as we know, and everybody in baseball realizes that. And you think about a 30 team major league rosters, the, the 30 teams, and you're looking at 12 pitchers per, that's almost half. Of your roster players are pitchers. Yeah. And that's how much they're used, either starters or, or relievers. But if the starter can't go deep, and that's one of the problems the A's have had on this road trip and in their season so far, when they have not gone deep in the game, they've usually suffered, and so has the bullpen. A two pitch, vote, swings and misses at a pitch down and in. So that's the first strikeout on the season for Di Sclafani. On oh, the hard slider, back foot, take the left foot, and there's the slider in the dirt. Handled nicely by Barnhart, the catcher, with a runner at first, could not have advanced anyway. But Dis Clafano is just uh, a funny, just a good slider, slings his fastball nicely. So two away, and here's Danny Valencia. Danny Valencia, he didn't have any fun in Milwaukee. He was <laughs> sick. So. Some of us had fun in Milwaukee. Valencia was not one of them. He was glad to get out of there. Yeah. Hitting 343 with nine home runs, 22 RBIs. Takes a first pitch strike. Problem for any hitter, although Danny did take BP on Wednesday. I think we saw him out on the field in the series finale. But when you miss time, whether it's an injury or an illness, sometimes your timing goes a little bit away. But for his numbers, 343 with a batting average, nine home runs. You hate to not be playing every day. Hold off that one a little yep. bit on two. Start guessing a little bit, start your swing a little bit too soon. You get a breaking ball as this one was from the right hander and really started on the corner, ended up out of the strike zone. And if a pitcher or catcher watches the hitter, they should tell him that he's looking for a pitch inside. And so the catcher Barnhart's going back outside. And that one is just foul past Joey Votto. So Coco Crisp led off this game with a base hit, still at first base. And a ball that was tossed into the stands. That Actually came back out onto the field, so that's the slight delay is. Well, 
2 pitch. Foul straight back. So let's see, you got a fastball to hit. Well, I think big leaguers will tell you one day off is okay. But if you take two days off, that can already affect your yeah. timing. So Valencia has had four. That's right. Yeah, it took the Monday off day in Milwaukee, stayed in the hotel because it was sick, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and off day yesterday. So the schedule off days make it even worse. Fouled off the catcher, Tucker Barnhart. See where it got him. Straight off the mask. And speaking of catchers getting hit in the mask, I think we should explain. Billy Hamilton, they made a move. The speedster for the the Reds. He got uh, hit in the head, sliding into third base, and did we get the official announcement that he's placed on the seven-day? Yeah, he, he went went through the concussion protocol, and we were told moments ago that he is indeed on the seven-day concussion DL. It usually happens to catchers, but Justin Morneau, who was just signed by the Chicago White Sox, a one-year contract. He was kicked in the head sliding into second base. He missed about a half a season. Sure. So it does happen more in the case of Billy Hamilton sliding head first into third was hit hard either by the knee or the glove or the ball in the glove by the third baseman. So no Billy Hamilton tonight. No Billy Hamilton for the weekend. And if you're catcher you're saying thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And <laughs> pitchers and catchers can say thank you. If he gets on, he can fly, and he has the stolen bases to prove it. One two pitch blocked by Tucker Barnhart. So two and two to Danny Valencia. Chris Davis would hit next if Valencia can get aboard. Now Barnhart getting his work, and actually for Valencia, sort of the count 0 and 2. He has now seen five more pitches after the 0-2, and that one blocked nicely by Barnhart, the catcher. Well, for a fastball outside, enough of the sliders in the dirt. The ball's hit hard towards short. Kozar with a dive. He flips to Phillips, side retired. So a nice play by Zach Kozar to end the top of the first. Cincinnati Reds. Here it is. Zach Kozart, who made that nice play to end the top of the first, he'll lead off. Joey Votto hit second. Brandon Phillips third. Jay Bruce fourth. Adam Duvall fifth. Eugenio Suarez is the third baseman. He hit sixth. And then it's Holt, Barnhart, and Di Sclafani. Sonny Gray, his second start since returning from the disabled list. First one was last Sunday in Houston. Well documented that he went five innings. Left after giving up just one run, 69 pitches. So he'd like to improve on his record, lower his ERA, help the A's win the first game on this road trip. And the A's won five in a row to leave home. Thought good things before starting this road trip, but have since lost five in a row. And 
like to get started back on a winning track. First pitch is bounced to Valencia, who is in on the grass. Across the diamond, one pitch, one out for Sonny Gray. So that'll bring up Joey Votto, first baseman. Defensively for the A's tonight, Davis, Crispin, Muncy in the outfield. Valencia, Simeon, Lowry, and Alonzo on the infield. Stephen Vogt is your catcher. So here's Joey Votto, first baseman. I was surprised when I looked at the numbers for Joey Votto this year. He is really struggling. That is a surprise. Throughout his career, he's always been one of the best hitters in the National League. He's not going anywhere. He is going to be with the Reds for a long time, and the contract he signed. Go Glove winner. National League MVP, Hank Aaron Award, All Star. Huge contract. Star of the team. He's got a contract that runs through 2023. It was a 10 year deal. This is his 10th season, so he's got a few more to go. The man last year, 314, 29 home runs, on base percentage of 459. He's a guy who has always walked a lot. Exactly. Maybe too much. To the point that people say maybe you should be swinging more, but you you have a strike zone. You know the strike zone. It's it's tough to deviate from that. It's called expanding the strike zone. Like choking up. That's something you very rarely see hitters in today's world. Chokes up maybe a couple of inches on the end of the bat. Crowds the plate a little bit. Three one pitch is hit high in the air right center. That's hit pretty well. Coco. Near the wall, Coco has got just enough room and he makes the catch. So Vado just got underneath that one. Maybe a little bit towards the end of the bat. But a good swing on a 3 1 fastball. Maybe a location a little bit up too much, but maybe it helped that he got under it just enough to keep it in the park. I'd say, Kype, you know this park as well as anybody, you start thinking there's a sun field for Coco and Checking for the wall. That a ball is hitting the air, a lot of people have to be thinking there's a chance it's going to go. And I think there are a few people thought that, maybe including Sonny Gray. Sonny doing a little yard work on the mound. And that's all pregame watery because the field's covered while it was raining most of the day. So two away, here's the veteran second baseman, Brandon Phillips. We mentioned these names in the open of our show. It's a dangerous middle of the lineup when you go Votto, Phillips, Bruce, and then Duvall, who has the 17 home runs. Pretty good veteran hitters. And he went around. <laughs> so 0 2 to Phillips. <laughs> he asked the first base umpire for the appeal. And he did. He called it a strike. Good breaking ball from Sonny Gray. That's, that's where he wants it thrown. Down. So Phillips used that one off the end of the bat. Count stays 0 2. Phillips at 267 with six home runs, 27 RBIs. And he is a magician around second base. He makes some unbelievable plays, usually highlight reel plays. In the dirt. Phillips now 34 years old. He'll be 35 a little bit later this month. So he's been around a long time and he's had a very nice career. Was it this past offseason when they had a trade done with yep. the Nationals, but he had veto power and he said, no, I'm staying. Ten and five. Ten years in the big leagues, last five with the same club. And that was enough for him to refuse to go to Washington. And what Jockey, the president, told me he also refused Arizona. They tried to trade him to Diamondbacks as well. And you have that that option. Some have no trade clauses in the contract, but it's an automatic 
through the rules of Major League Baseball that if you have 10 years and five, the 10 and five as they call it, you can refu refuse a trade. So he wants to stay in Cincinnati. That one tapped slowly up the third baseline. Vote quickly over there. Throws to first, and Sonny Gray has a three up, three down. First inning, no score after one from Cincinnati. Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile and the A's made a trade yesterday. They sent Chris Coughlin back to the Chicago Cubs and they got a minor league infielder outfielder by the name of Rismendi Alcantara and he is playing he will be playing in triple A for the athletics. It's just a struggle for Chris Coughlin this year by a 146 average. I don't think any of us saw that coming. And we wish him luck huh? because you know he did struggle here and you can only look at maybe changing of leagues and going back to the National League where he's more familiar and maybe that will Help him going to a club that. And that one is ripped to left. Duvall got over there, then he leaped up and he made the catch. Chris Davis didn't miss any time. <laughs> that swing right out of the chute with a line drive. Too much top spin and first pitch hitting fastball hit on top of it and came straight down to Duvall as he made the jump. And he's fighting a tough sun field yeah. on the field. That looks like it could be a handful for another inning or so. How about tomorrow on Sunday? Yeah. Tomorrow it's an earlier start, three hours earlier, four o'clock local time. So probably a Sunfield host, if not all the day, tomorrow and Sunday. Hey. So here's Yonder Alonzo. So I guess Alcantara was playing second base mm -hmm. in the minor leagues yeah. for the Cubs. He also can play the outfield. Speedy guy. Yep. Straight to Nashville. Mm -hmm. So it was a busy 48 hours for the A's. Director of team travel <laughs> Mickey Morbido was busy. <laughs> Couldn't even go to dinner till late last night, right? He's on the phone. Getting guys out, getting guys in. Check swing by Alonzo. A good swing, although might have gotten away with one. See me bump nor third base said no. Two and two the count. Alonzo at 234 with a homer and 12 RBIs. And he lines one to right. Bruce getting back. It's going to be over his head. Bangs off the wall. Bruce has it, and he's got a good arm. He fires a strike back to second base. It's a long single for Yonder Alonzo. So second hit. So let's kind of finish up the the roster moves for the A's. You saw the Coglin trade. Jesse Hahn was sent back to Triple A. 
And Max Muncy brought up. He's in the lineup tonight. And also Zach Neal. And Zach Neal is in the bullpen. So Han out. Coglin out off the big league roster. Muncy on the big league roster, as is Zach Neal. And don't forget, Rich Hill was placed on the disabled list. And we do have exciting news about tomorrow, though, right? The A's will call up Daniel Mingden, and he will make his major league debut tomorrow, right here in Cincinnati. That's yep. a big deal. We're excited about that. And there it is. We'll have it for you. He's having a terrific season in the minor leagues. Look at those numbers. And he will be opposed by former A Dan Straley. Nice job of hitting by Marcus Simeon. He shoots on the right field for a hit. So that will Mingden will take Rich Hill's spot. Well, good job by Marcus Simeon. The pitch away from him, just going in that direction with a breaking ball. Huge hole on the right side. Phillips close to second. Not necessarily a shift, but close to second for a double play. So here's Max Muncie. 263 down in Triple A for Muncie with seven home runs. I'm gonna miss. Oh, with Coglin traded, Reddick still on the disabled list. Muncie could get some at bats. Mm -hmm. Well, his versatility has really helped out playing in the outfield as well as infield. Getting the start in right field tonight with Coglin. Heading to Chicago. Muncy hits one high in the air to center. Holt going back near the warning track and he makes the catch. Both runners tag. Both runners will advance. So Alonzo to third, Simeon to second. But now two outs with the pitcher coming up. Got to be a little bit smarter about hitting. Don't want to hit that long of a drive to center field. Uh, Pull it. A short pop. Up. Yeah, yeah. Pull it. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drop in front of somebody or, yeah. Yeah, or yank one. So here's Gray. One for eight in his career as a hitter. Now, hit a base hit down at Dodger Stadium last year. Remember, Sonny Gray shut down the Dodgers in L.A. last year. First pitch is a strike. Well, all the pitchers for the A's who have been taking batting practice, Bob Melvin has emphasized bunting. Mm -hmm. Something that Sean and I was not able to do Tuesday night. But most of them want to swing the bat. And he said that's fine, but be able to bunt. Well, now Sonny Gray's has the chance to swing the bat. Lays off that pitch down and away. So one and one the count. We saw the Brewers pitchers do a pretty good job yeah. with the bat, and I think that helped the Brewers in their two wins over the year. Absolutely. Eight. No shift for Sonny Gray in the outfield playing very shallow. One, one pitch. Fastball in on the hands, and it's rolled toward the Reds' dugout. But Dan Straley, who formerly was with the Athletics, is now. Pitching and pitch tomorrow night is this fastball. A little late. Yeah, kind of by him. A little tardy. But Straley is taking BP today. He's talking about how I said I love it. Man. Get a chance to swing the bat. Just staying long enough as a starting pitcher to be able to get an opportunity to swing. That's all it takes. You figure a breaking pitch is coming sometime now with a couple of strikes. That one tapped foul and. Pretty good job of covering it by Sonny Gray. Sonny is one that during spring training and Bob Melvin said this past spring they did not have to utilize a pitcher at any time. The National League managers in their parks allowed them to use a DH. Sonny though last year in spring training was told to stand at the plate like a statue. He didn't listen and he said let me swing the bat and he's running hard to first base and manager didn't like it that much. And that one bounced in a tough play, knocked down by Votto. He gets it himself, turns like he's going to throw to third base. Like he thought there was one out. Because that's the third <laughs> out. Come on, 
out, Joey. <laughs> it's game one of three. Let's go. <laughs>about last year's all-star game was right here in Cincinnati Sonny Gray and Stephen Boat both selected for the first time Remember, Sonny did not pitch in the all-star game he had pitched on the Sunday before in Cleveland Stephen Vogt did get one at bat and he struck out but the fact that the ace finished the first half in Cleveland made it kind of a, a nice little yeah. thing for Sonny and Stephen because they jumped in a, a little party bus and yeah. Drove down to Cincinnati right. and they had a good time. And Jason Kipnis of the Jason Indians Kipnis. came with us. That's right. Sonny pitched a shutout in the season or the uh, first half finale in Cleveland and he and Bodie came down. Was it the ground that Vogt had to face? Was it? <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Struck out, he said that's okay. This year's all-star game is in San Diego. So Petco Park gets an all-star game for the first time. Here's Jay Bruce. Bruce goes after the first pitch with the shift on. Lowry has it, throws, and gets Bruce by a step. So one out, and here comes the young man we talked about in the open of our show, Adam Duvall. And he's become quite a story. The Giants needed a starting pitcher last year, and they wanted Mike Leak. And Leak, pretty good starting pitcher. The Reds said we want Adam Duvall who had good seasons in the minor leagues. It's like a young man who likes the pitches up and you try to keep them down as much as possible. Well, he's been hot lately. So Duvall with 17 home runs. He's got 40 RBIs. Only Nolan Arenado has more, so he's ahead of Chris Carter, Trevor Story, on a Cespedes in the National League. So quite a start for Adam Duvall. Yeah. Two and zero, oh. and he just got under this one. Skies it toward Lowry. Lowry, a couple steps out onto the grass. He's got it. So two away. Kind of I think the one thing we have seen and will continue to see probably is aggressiveness of the National League hitters and I say National League because they don't seem to take a lot of pitches especially when they have a count in their favor. That was a 2 0 that he jumped on just got under it. Joey Votto had a 3 1 count just missed one. Here's a Hohenio Suarez. Third baseman.
Suarez had 13 home runs last year in 97 games. He's got 13 home runs already this year. Batting average a little low at 230. But he's got lots of power. And he likes to <laughs> drop and drive. <laughs> little uppercut. Check this swing. There's your uppercut. In the dirt, so the count one and two. And big Alfredo Simon who pits for the Tigers for a year, but had a couple good years here. The Reds traded him to Detroit. It was after the 2014 season, and this is who the Reds got in that trade. Swing and a miss. He swung at a pitch in the dirt, and Sonny Gray has retired the first. Six. So, third inning coming up. No score between the A's and the Reds. For Ford Wright choice. So last night, the A's picking sixth overall in the Major League Baseball draft. They took a big left hander by the name of A.J. Puck out of the University of Florida. Six foot seven, 230 pounds. See the numbers from his season this year and his career numbers as a Gator. A.J. Puck, six foot seven. And I know as the spring kind of went on, there was early in the spring. His name was popping up quite a bit as maybe the first right. overall pick. The Phillies had the first pick. The A's had to be thrilled when they saw his name sitting there at six. So hopefully the start of a nice career in the green and gold. A.J. Puck. I think he's got a couple of kids out of Florida. Yeah. In the second round as well. But the big boy in the first round. And that's special for him. So get him signed. Get him to the Coliseum. Let him throw in front of Kurt Young, get him up in the booth, say hello, and send him off his way. Sure. And get him in the minor leagues and back to the big leagues as quickly as possible. Coco Crisp is two for two. So a leadoff single here in the third. Well, let's check out A.J. Puck. Again, he is a big fella. He throws very hard, upper 90s, they tell us. And there he is. Yeah, the advance prediction, just like you said, that uh, those guys had him going perhaps the top pick by Philadelphia. Cincinnati had the second pick, but good fastball, live fastball, hard slider. 6'7". Hmm. <laughs> That's tall. It that is tall. Well, here's Lowry. So rounds one and two were last night. Today it was rounds three through ten. And the draft will wrap up tomorrow. But the A's were very pitcher heavy. 
that I read were eight of their first 11 picks were pitchers and most of them were college pitchers. It's good. Which is interesting. I say good but because usually college pitchers you don't spend that much time in the minor leagues because they get uh, unless they're junior college they have to go at least three years to four year school. So they've got some good uh, conditioning good programs. Last year they took a, a Florida player with the shortstop. Remember Richie Martin? That's right. Matt Chapman the year before. Matt Chapman the year before. So they've got some good youngsters at the minor leagues. Build the farm system and you get the kids in the big leagues at the same time. You have them under control for a long time. Lowry takes down and in, so they count two and one. For the commentary last night after I can't remember which pitcher was drafted, but said he'd thrown 138 pitches in a game, and one of the guys said, Taking three starts to throw that in the big leagues or in professional baseball. Probably in the minor yeah, leagues. Yeah, because they will protect, and that's a lot of pitches. And remember the name Kirk Dressendorfer yeah. out of Texas came and boy, they had worn him out. And sometimes you just have to shut a pitcher down for a full season after he signs because of the overload and overwork in college football, college baseball. I mean, nothing gets colleges want to win, but uh, give a young man a lot of money and you're going to protect him coming up through the system. Two and one. Lowry hit a fly ball to left field. He rolls over on this one. Phillips has it. Kozar, and that's a double play. Four six three double play. Two outs here in the third. The, the next two picks for the A's after AJ Puck was a lottery round pick. The 30, 37th choice was Dalton Jeffries from Cal. Yeah. And then the 47th pick. The A's took Logan Shore, another pitcher from Florida, and who actually, just as far as college statistics, was even better than mm -hmm. than Puck. Southeast Conference Pitcher of the Year, and that says something in that conference. It's a terrific baseball conference. Those were the first three selections, all college pitchers for the A's. Vote drives one to right. Bruce is going back. He's at the wall, and that baby's gone. Steven Vote gets the A's on the board, and it's one to nothing here in the third. I see you playing the All Star game. You strike out against a hard throwing right handed. You come back the next year playing a regular season. Second at bat. Oh! He had a home run. His fifth for. Steven Vogt crushed it and usually pretty good contact for him bringing a hands in a fastball that slid back towards the middle of the plate. And Steven Vogt great extension. And sometimes you see a guy make contact the ball doesn't travel but for Vogt it seems that his follow through is as big as anything. So great swing for him putting the A's on the board. Well, and remember he did not have a good first at bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah swing on yeah. straight out the slider down and in. So whatever he may have looked at or thought about going into a second bat at bat it worked. So one nothing is that home run for vote his fifth of the year. Valencia drives one left center field. Nobody's going to get this one and one hops the wall. Tyler Holt picks it up flips it back in Valencia with the double. That was a result of the aggressiveness of Steven Vogt hanging slider. Steven vote to Danny Valencia and the aggressiveness getting the foot down and left the ball right in the middle of the plate. And while he did not hit a home run still a double to left center on a ball that was scorched. So for Valencia his sixth double of the year. So that's 102 home runs now, right? Yep. Oof. That's a lot. So Chris Davis a chance to knock in a run. Slider first strike. Davis hit a shot right at Duvall in left field. Leading off the second inning back in the lineup. Still not 100 percent. I was asking about the feeling and they had the, the funny bone hit by a pitch. 
in Houston, and he's still lacking complete feeling in his ring finger on his left hand. Oh, that doesn't help at all. Wow. Looks like the same place. Does have protection on the left elbow. Check the left elbow right up and in. Got him. In the, same spot. Fortunately, and hopefully, the protection that he had did help. Seems to be okay. Sounded like it hurt, but probably not that thrilled about what just happened. Here's Alonzo, who had a line drive single in the second inning. It actually went over Bruce's head, but it bounced right back to Bruce, and it held Alonzo to a single. Breaking ball, first strike. This is what happened on Saturday in Houston. No protection on this. One. Feldman got him. Left uh, left elbow and it's kind of like the funny ball, the crazy ball. And it, you hit it, you lose the feeling in your fingers, and it usually goes away quickly. But that's if you bang your elbow on a table or something. But not getting hit by a 90 mile an hour fastball. Cued toward third. Suarez has it. Throws across side retired boat with a solo home run is fifth of the year. So the A's have a one nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the third. Gives the A's a 1-0 lead with the home run. And now in the bottom of the third, Sonny Gray will go to work against Holt, Barnhart, and Di Sclafani. It's always sunny in Cincy. Wasn't this morning. No, it, was it was raining. Not. It was raining actually pretty hard. But mid-afternoon, it started to clear up. And boy, it's a nice night. Nice and comfortable. We did not see the sun a whole lot in Milwaukee. No. It's kind of overcast and even a little bit cool there the whole time we were there. This is Tyler Holt playing center field. One and one to count. Two ninety six with six RBIs for Holt. And a couple of doubles and a triple. Tap solely Valencia has to charge he'll barehand he throws and a nice play by Danny Valencia. You have to make that decision. Should I barehand it. And he did he was playing in and that's the good news because with two strikes he plays back this way. He can get to it and make the barehand this is how close it is considering playing in if he's playing back probably no play. Good scoop at first by the actually I don't know maybe he just stretched out and caught the ball but Danny. Valencia with a bare hand crosses body. 
And Alonzo actually reached out and caught the ball without the ball hitting the ground, which makes it even better for the first baseman. So here's Tucker Barnhart, the left handed hitter. Barnard at 252, couple of homers and 10 RBIs. Well, the Reds have a pretty good catcher. He's out the disabled as Devin Nazaraco had a shoulder surgery. A couple of years ago, he hit over 20 home runs to Nazaraco, but then last year, a lot of time on the disabled list, and this year, now they had shoulder surgery. So he is missed. High fastball one and two. Homer Bailey, pretty good starting pitcher. He's on the disabled list with Tommy John surgery. They get the opportunities. If one of the things Sonny Gray last Sunday noticed in his start in Houston, his left foot, remember how closed it was? Almost like he was pitching out of the stretch, but out of the windup. It's kind of open it up a little bit where it's a little bit more of a conventional wind up instead of like his good friend David Price out of Vandy. But the left foot now is actually pointing a little bit towards the on deck circle of the Reds towards the first base. But before he had a very, very abbreviated wind up and getting very close to being a wind up that uh, a lot of pitchers use without just setting up like they're in the stretch and he's going to get the strike out there second strikeout well you I mean now that it's talked about more you see a lot of guys That's using right. it. so Sonny was one of those and he's gone back to more of a conventional and a curveball and, and basically it, it's like a hitter opening up his stance and as a pitcher if you open up your front foot you automatically open yourself up to clear your hips a little bit better and you know, he kept the ball down last Sunday. He's keeping the ball down tonight. Maybe one little adjustment with the footwork has helped him. Who knows? But it is a little bit different for him. First pitch in for a strike to Discofani. Here it is. See the left foot? That was actually right next to his right foot before he went on the disabled list. And since he's come back, then it's just a more of a step. Before, it was just very, very small, if any, kind of a step. Who knows? Maybe yeah. he just. Tried it and said, you know, that feels just a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Well, I watched David Price uh, pitch the other night, and he has no windup. I mean, his his right foot right next to his left foot, and he just hardly moves his lower body at all. Oh, David, you say David Price? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's it almost looks a little strange because it's it's so far away from yeah. kind of the. The, the, I don't know what you would say, regular windup. Right, right. But at least some movement. But it looks like he's just standing there straight. and then he just starts to pitch. Exactly. And I kind of hope we saw him with Texas, Ross Ollendorf. I want to see him pitch because he's, that would be the he's got opposite. the old fashioned windup. The old, here's the windup and over the top. And, yeah, A little bit high. But the A's need Sonny Gray to be able to pitch every fifth day. And Rich Hill get him back healthy. And, you know, some young pitchers getting opportunities to take advantage of those. And you still waiting on Henderson Alvarez as yeah, well. That's true. This Lafani has been doing some hitting because he took a pretty good breaking ball from Sonny Gray. He has to almost get a fastball now to this three and two. Foul, and that is a pretty good swing. When you take a 2 2 curveball, a hard curveball from Sonny Gray, that's good hitting. It's a fastball. He, he figured he's going to get a fastball three and two because no pitcher likes to walk the opposing pitcher. You know, 156 average last year. It's not bad. And he rips one center field, and Coco with a great jump makes the catch. So nine up, nine down for Sonny Gray, and we are through three in Cincinnati. One nothing A's.
play. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Go to AAA.com for more details. You may want to be out on that boat tomorrow. It's supposed to be 95 degrees tomorrow wow. and 92 on Sunday. Is that the river that runs through it? <laughs> oh, Raymond. <laughs> Slow down. That's the Ohio River yes, just yeah. over right field. And Kentucky just on the other side of the Kentucky's river, right? right? We can see Kentucky. Yeah. It's right there. In fact, Dan Shreddy said, where do you live, Dan? He said, in Kentucky. In Kentucky. <laughs> Just Covington, right? Yeah, just across the river. Is it 28 miles? I will say this to Ray. I walked around the lower concourse today before the game. It's because a nice ballpark. Mm -hmm. And when I got to right field, I said, all right, if you were to hit one, could you hit one into the Ohio River? Now you think in, in San Francisco you can hit one into the water. In right. Pittsburgh, you can do it. Yeah. So I was thinking, well. Could you hit one in the water here? And then I realized that no, you can't. <laughs> because there's a shot into the glove. Third baseman Suarez for out number one. Because first of all, you'd have to hit it over, obviously, the seats or if you went down the line. Right under that, there's a concourse, a fairly wide concourse. And then below that, there's a sidewalk and below next to that there's a four lane road and next to the other side is another sidewalk and then there's the river. So I don't think you could do it. It would be like a 600 foot home run. I think. Yeah. Even Ted Klazuski when Ted, he played Ted, for the Reds think, many years ago probably couldn't do it. Now if you got one to bounce <laughs> it could bounce. Into the Ohio River. but Not on a fly. Big Ted played at Crosley Field. I don't think there's a river around Crosley. Is there, was there a river around Crosley Field at all? No, I didn't think so. No, it's a whole different area. Clue with the big cutoff sleeves. Looking good. Big arms so big couldn't fit in the sleeves. Well, according to the media guide, Adam Dunn hit the longest home run ever here in this ballpark, 535 feet. It says nothing about where that it landed in the water, so that means it, it did not it. land in the water. It, it bounced, bounced, said it bounced water. to the, in the and river. That's fine. And, yeah. You can bounce one in. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not going in on a fly, folks. And that's when he played for the Reds? Because any other team, they would never save that far. Usually they don't give distances for visiting players. 2004? Thank you. So three and one the count to Max Muncie. Is Adam Dunn one of the nicest guys in the world? Yeah, it was fun to have him for a short period of time. Now Sunday gets to bunt. And Muncie aboard. East Mathani was trying so hard to get out Muncie so he could face Sonny Gray without this possibility of a sacrifice. And it is not that easy. And they practice, but it's practicing against Mike Aldretti, his first base coach, getting off a tee. I think Sean Manaya experienced it. Sonny Gray's a pretty good athlete. And he's already squaring around. Oh, a little slap. Except there they had Phillips breaking behind the first base runner in the event. And that's one thing Bob Melvin has been talking to the guys. They square around the bun and then caught a slap, try to slap it. But in that case, as Barnhart came up, coming in to charge was Votto. Behind him was Phillips. This one is bunted and it's fair and Votto thought about going to second. And he scooped it up. He looked that way and said let's just get the sure out. So it is a sacrifice for Sonny Gray. Okay on this field and. Look at the grass right next to the foul line. So Joy Votto very familiar. If there had been more dirt. Well probably would have rolled foul if he's going to stay on the grass he's going to stay fair and he charged so quickly. Didn't want to take the chance, even though Phillips was covering first. But Sonny Gray did exactly what a pitcher is supposed to do: National or American League, and that is sacrifice. Even with one out, put a runner in scoring position with two outs. And now Coco steps in. He's two for two. Coco came into this game sitting on an 0 for 16 stretch. But Coco is also one of those guys that he can string together hits. That's Muncie, the runner at second. 
Outfield straight away. Bruce has a terrific arm in right field. I think Darren Bush, the A's hitting coach, explained hitting with runners in scoring position perfectly. He said nobody on base. A pitcher will pitch to contact, try to get quick outs. But when he gets a runner in scoring position, and I think Bush is spot on, a pitcher then pitches the way he wants to with his strength. He's trying to get a hitter to avoid getting a hit with the runner in scoring position, and it's like he accomplished it. Holt in, he calls off Phillips, and the side is retired. So Muncie is stranded after the one-out walk. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Kozar, Vado, and Phillips will hit for the Reds. That gentleman right there, his name is Ryan Gerace, and he's a big A's fan. He lives in Akron, Ohio, and well, he had his dream moment before <laughs> today's game. He met my partner. He's a big Ray Fossey fan, and that's awesome. This guy was psyched, and this did not just happen like today. He's been trying to <laughs> get your autograph for a while now. And yeah. Today was his special yeah. day, so Ray took good care of him as we knew you would. <laughs> Well, that's very nice. Akron, Ohio. And I said, isn't Akron closer to Cleveland than Cincinnati? He said, yes, but he said, I'd never been to this park. Why not? So he took the drive here a little bit farther, but yeah, that was, uh, he went a lot of work to do that. So very happy to accommodate. So he, his day was made before the game even started. And now he's, looks like he's got pretty good seats. Yeah. And he can sit back and enjoy it. Those are good seats. I wonder he had to buy them early. I didn't leave them. I know that. Well, he didn't want to ask too much of <laughs> yeah. you today. Now, if you get Sunny Gray to pitch a winner. Yeah. Yeah, good luck charm because he's looking for some wins on this trip. So far so good for Sonny Gray. He's retired nine in a row with a couple of strikeouts. Only to the count to Zach Kozar. Vote with a home run in the third for the only run in the game so far. And Stephen Vogt does know that whenever he catches Sonny Gray, he will get his work in blocking balls in the dirt. And that's even with two strikes, good curveball from from Sonny. And it's important because you don't want to see the pitcher leaving the curveballs up in the zone, the hangers, because they're going to get hit. There's a shot. Diving play by Lowry, and he got it. Jed Lowry on the backhand dive. And that's a heck of a play. Didn't have much of a chance to be slicing back to him either. Hard hit ball and good angle by Jed Lowry to be able to go get a ball that was headed towards right center just over the glove. Of Sonny Gray. And so Jen Lowry moving over to second base this year full time and. 
Um, Kozart of a base hit, maybe even extras, because Sonny was playing over left center. A one away, here's Vado. Vado hit a deep fly ball to center field in the first. Brandon Phillips to follow here in the bottom of the fourth inning in Cincinnati. I mentioned the, the Reds woes pitching offensively a little bit of a different story They're Seventh in the National League in run scored so right in the middle of the pack. But fifth in home runs. Fifth in stolen bases. They do not walk a lot. They're last in the National League in walks. I think that's a surprise simply because anybody that has Joey Votto on their team, you wouldn't think they'd be last in walks because Votto walks a lot. But overall, 266 runs scored. But when it's all said and done, add it all up, and they are 22 and 38. And that's the second worst record in the National League. So it's been a struggle. 3 0 green light. I don't think anybody was surprised to see that. Stephen Boat actually called a pretty good pitch with the fans pulled down and in. I think. Uh, Comment earlier in our open about the middle part of this batting on that's pretty potent. It is. And you, yeah. you think about scoring that few runs, and you really can't pitch around anybody because the guy who's following, you got Phillips following, and then Bruce, and then Duvall. That's four pretty strong hitters, second through five. Well, even Kozar's having a good year that's in the true. leadoff yeah. spot. And, and, and Really the guy who is not having a good year is Joey Votto. Everybody else is, is pretty much doing their thing. Duvall's been great. Votto gets the walk there. So that's the first walk issued by Sonny Gray. First base runner. And for Votto, that is his 36th walk of the year. Brandon Phillips a hit down the right field line last night to extend his hitting streak to 12. Adam Wainwright gave up two in the first inning last time. That was it. Settled down. Pretty good pitcher, Wainwright. Phillips takes a little bit outside with a 95 mile an hour fastball from Sonny Gray. Phillips thrown out by Stephen Vogt in the first inning. Phillips is sitting on a 12 game hitting streak. This one tapped towards Simeon. He's got to wait for the big hop. Out at second on the first double play. Six, four, three, double play. And that will do it for the Reds in the fourth. Fifth inning coming up. A's one, Reds nothing.
Celebra celebrate Father's Day at the ballpark. Log on to athletics.com slash tickets and use coupon, coupon code DEAD to receive $10 off field level tickets to see the A's take on their AL West rivals, the Los Angeles Angels. Discounted Father's Day tickets are subject to availability, so make plans now to treat Dad to an afternoon of baseball on Sunday, June the 19th. That's one week from this Sunday. At the Coliseum, the A's back home Monday night after what seems like a month-long road trip. <laughs> but a good homestand coming yeah, up. Yeah, good one coming up. Four against Texas, three against the Angels, and then an off day, and then two against Milwaukee. Hey. Going to Anaheim for four, and then you play the four games against the Giants, yeah. which is always fun. So that is what is coming up. A's will be home a lot for the next month. And the West Coast on top of it. That would be good to get out of the East Coast time zone. A's will have only one more trip to the Eastern time zone. That will be to Cleveland. Votto has it. Lowry's retired. Oh, well, there's the look ahead. So three night games against the Rangers, and then Thursday will be a day game. Nice weekend series against the Angels. Monday is the off day. Monday is the A's Community Fund Golf Tournament. And then the Brewers for two. Four in Anaheim. Have we been to Anaheim no. yet this year? No. I don't think so. We haven't been to Anaheim or Texas since we'll, June 11th. We'll go to 10th. Texas in July, August, and September. No, I've not gone to those yet. Actually, the Angels will have come. And that's the Rangers and the Angels no. will have come to the Coliseum twice. For the A's visit them once. One and zero to Stephen Vogt. Vogt a strikeout and a homer. And he lines one foul. This is what Vogt did in the third inning. Jumped on a first pitch fastball and watch the extension from Stephen Vogt. I mean, you, know, you follow through. He finally knew it was gone when he left his bat and. Fan caught it in his cap. Steven Vogt getting the A's on the board. Had a good swing there. Final game of the first half last year in Cleveland, the game that Sonny Gray pitched the shutout. All the runs driven in in that game were by Steven Vogt. So maybe it's something magical about Vogt and Gray being the battery. In Sonny Ohio, pitching in Ohio. Well. In Ohio, that's, that's right. A's were here in 2013 for a two game series. That's the last time the A's and the Reds played. Vote hits it hard. Phillips dives. He's got it. And he cannot get rid of it, and Vote will have a hit. And Phillips, who well, he's made a ton of plays like that. And he had it, he just could not transfer it. Yeah, look where he's playing. The ball was headed in the gap. Dive backhand from his knee started. And if he had thrown before he lost his balance, he would have thrown him out. But right there, he didn't have the grip, didn't have the ball in his hand, and his momentum with his weight shift from his knees took him to the ground. Never had the ball. And I think he knows that he would have had vote if he would have got rid of yep. it. So Stephen Vote has a couple of hits. Here's Valencia. First pitch is well inside. So again, A's and Reds playing for the sixth time in interleague play. And this is the third time that the A's have come to Cincinnati. In fact, you were here, I was not. 2002, that was the first time the A's came to Cincinnati, and that was the last year of Riverfront Stadium. And we watched this being built. That's right, it was, you could see it. Yeah. It's just like if you saw it in St. Louis, saw it in New York, at Shea, now City Field, and those three stadiums were being built while they were playing in their older stadium. Right. And as soon as they were finished, they imploded it. Nice play by Suarez at third. Phillips on the first. Got in. Nice double play by the Cincinnati Reds. Suarez to Phillips to Votto, and they just got Valencia at first. So second double play turn by the Reds. Still one nothing as we go to the bottom of the fifth.
Red Machines, the nickname given to the Cincinnati Reds baseball team that dominated the National League in the decade of the 70s. The team is widely recognized as being among the best in baseball history. When that span, the team won six National League West titles, four National League pennants, and a couple of World Series titles. The team's combined record from 1970 to 1979, 953 and 657, an average of more than 95 wins per season. They were terrific. And I think if you look at the decade of the 70s, I think because of the three World Series titles won by the Asia, I, I, I think you have to give the title of the best team of the 70s to the team that won the most World Series. I just, I, I mean, I think, but in the late 70s, the A's really went down. The Reds in that decade, right. I mean, they were dominant the whole way through. Oh, remember, the four times they didn't win the division, Ray, they finished in second place. Right. And I remember in 75 when the A's lost to the Red Sox in three games, and the Red Sox and the Reds played in the World Series. Big hop for Lowry, and he'll throw out Bruce. But it was as if the A's had not won the three previous World Series because at that time, a lot of people didn't like Charlie. I mean, bottom line, and sure. you know, did not want to give a lot of credit primarily to him. But look at the Hall of Famers and Bench Morgan and Tony Perez. Of course, their manager, Sparky Anderson, in the Hall of Fame. 63 collective All Star yeah. game appearances. Now, they were something. They lost to the Orioles in 1970 and then the A's in 1972. World Series known as the Hares versus the Squares. Because the Reds had where you can see the uniforms in that shot where they had to have a little horseshoe back of the, the stirrup socks, no facial hair. The A's were just the opposite starting that year. Duvall taps it toward Valencia and fires it across two away. But the Reds are still looking for their first hit with two outs here in the fifth inning. Sonny Gray had 52 pitches. I have to remember last year opening night at the Coliseum against the Rangers pitch into the eighth inning with a no hitter. Ryan Rua with the first hit of the game for the Rangers. Tonight, Sonny Gray doing exactly what he did prior to his demise, really, at the beginning of the season when he started elevating. Everything now is down in the zone. Curveball, fastball. Even when he misses, they're out of the strike zone, down, and that's where you want them. Suarez struck out swinging in the second. Two strikeouts for Gray. He has walked one. And one walk was erased on the double play. So 2 and 0 the count. There's a shot toward center. Coke goes there. He's got it. Side retire. So we are through five innings. It's the A's one and the Reds nothing.
Ace Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Sonoma Raceway. NASCAR is back at Sonoma Raceway for the Toyota Save Mart 350. It's June 24th through the 26th. Get your tickets today at SonomaRaceway.com. One of the team stores here at Great American Ballpark. Lots of Reds. Lots of Reds goodies. Lots of the color red. And you know when the Cardinals were just in town, it must have felt like a home game for them well, yeah. because it was all red. And all the seats yeah. are red. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I mean, it's, it was perfect for them. Except the, the, I guess the seats right behind home plate there. Oh, there's the backs there. are black, yeah. but the, the actual seats are red. Two and the count to Chris Davis. Davis, Alonzo, and Simeon. His ballpark opened in 2003, so it's the 14th year of the Great American Ballpark. Taken over for Riverfront Stadium, which was, as Ray said, could see this being built. Riverfront just next door. And that was hot. And the artificial surface, it was a big ball because it was a multi purpose stadium. Bengals played there as well as the Reds. It's like three rivers and riverfront. They were all it's kind the of same, the same. Yeah. Same concept. Here they have their own stadium. I guess the Bengals have their own. Just reading today, are they playing? Is the Bengals playing something else? What's that? I, the Bengals, I, it's not, I was reading somebody about a football team that the Bengals may be playing in another city or state. I don't know, something like that. I can't believe they would do that. But. Well, they're. Stadium, Paul Brown Stadium, just yeah. right down the street. Mm -hmm. A couple blocks. Big football town, not quite like Green Bay, but nothing's like Green Bay. No, right? not quite. Three and one to Davis. Swing and a miss. In fact, right in between this stadium and Paul Brown Stadium for the Bengals is where Riverfront Stadium used to mm -hmm. sit. Hand coming off yep. the bat for Chris Davis. I'd like to see him make contact on that pitch. Davis has lined out and then was hit by a pitch right in the left elbow, of course. De Sclafani is a ground ball pitcher, has nine ground ball outs in the first five innings. And of course, the one that he got elevated was a home run by Stephen Vogt. And that one runs inside and it's a leadoff walk. Yeah, you know, the fact that he had he's kind of had his five rehab assignments. The starting pitcher can go out for 30 days because he pitches every fifth day typically. But evidently no restrictions on him tonight either, just because of pitching in the sixth innings. 80th pitch is about to be thrown. And for Sonny, last Sunday was going to be his final rehab game. And he started in Houston. He was limited to five or 80. And it being five innings and 69 pitches. Swing and a miss by Alonzo. Alonzo has singled and he has grounded out. So now at 80 pitches, and that gets the bullpen up for the Reds. Daniel Wright. Six righties and one lefty in that Reds bullpen. And that one to the backstop. And that will allow Davis to go to second base. That was not even close. A hard slider. The only thing Barnhunt could do is this try to backhand it. Just got under his glove almost a great scoop. He'd come back hard to him, but a different direction. So one and one the count with Simeon in the on deck circle. Outside two and one off speed pitch from Di Sclafani. 
the most pitches Ray he threw in any one of those rehab starts. 77. So he's at 82 so. He may not be out there a whole lot yeah. longer. Well the leadoff walk and. The six pitches and the fact that a couple were elevated eye high to. Chris Davis one almost hitting to finally walk him. Good swing there by Yonder Alonzo. Has not lost anything off of the velocity. One run on seven hits for the A's. For the Reds, no runs, no hits. As we're in the top of the sixth inning. Check swing and now a full count. Alonzo doing his best to try to pull the ball to the right side to advance Chris Davis runs are at a premium. For the ace shut out on Wednesday for just the second time of the season. Tonight leading by one. Be nice to get the runner at third see what Simeon could do with him at third. And that one is driven to right. Bruce going back and it is over his head. It bangs off the wall. Bruce picks it up and now Alonzo is going to try for second and he is going to be out. Davis gets to third stops there and Jay Bruce got a nice bounce right off the wall and he just picked it up and fired it back in. He got it again as he had done the first at bat when Alonzo was held to a single actually stopped there was a little cutter came right back of the wheelhouse and almost that close to being a home run halfway up the wall Chris Davis was actually tagging in the event the ball was caught he's going to get to third Alonzo trying to go for two and Bruce with a strong throw and Cozart making the play so he got the runner to third yes, he did <laughs> not really the way he wanted it but he gets a single but an out so the Reds bring the infield in Try to choke off this run. Simeon a single and a line out to third. Blocked by Tucker Barnhart. You know, with Simeon hitting seventh, you have Muncy hitting eighth, so it's not as if you have the pitcher in the on deck circle that you could work carefully to the hitter. That's at the plate now in Simeon, so Mark is a good opportunity. Take the hit that he had in his first at bat to the right side. Votto way off the line at first. One foul back just to our right. So now it's two and one. And Marcus Simeon, I'm sure, kept thinking about Tuesday night in Milwaukee when the A's had the runners at first and third down by a run. One out. Marcus was up just trying to. Tie the game with any kind of a hit, fly ball, something, but he ended up striking out on a slider away from it. He's lost it by one run. Here's another opportunity to get the runner in from third. 2 1 pitch is hit high in the air foul. So 2 and 2 the count. Two and two. And that one rolled foul. You can see Barnard, the catcher, tapping the ground, wanting it low, and actually he, that's where the pitch was. But Simeon did a good job of spoiling it. Well, Marcus in a protect mode right now with count of two and two, a couple of strikes on him. And he wants it on the ground. That's the slider down. He ends up throwing it down in that area, but left it in the inner part of the plate. If he threw it, where he wanted it out. May have got a strikeout. Yeah, exactly. 
Also could be a little bit of fatigue too. Sure. Pitch number 90, 91 coming up and just trying to get through this sixth. Again, tap foul. So he has not had a, a real bad inning where he's thrown 30 pitches, but he has not had a real quick inning either. But this, these are high stress at bats. They can take it out of a pitcher. Again, fouled straight back and a very good swing by Marcus Simeon. One thing Marcus is familiar with an 18 pitch at bat. We remember that. <laughs> yes. He, yes. So he fouled off a ton and. Just try to protect you try to shorten a swing especially with the infield in you don't have to hit it. That hard to get it through the infield. Especially stay back get a breaking ball think about right field. And he checks his swing holds up on that slider. So now a 3 2 count with Max Muncy waiting in the on deck circle. Good block by the catcher. Great hold on his swing by Marcus Simeon. There's a slider in the dirt. Tap toward third. Throw to the plate. And out by a lot is Davis. So he was going on contact. And Davis is easily thrown out at the plate. So fielder's choice for Simeon. Wow. Man at second, nobody out. Runner at third, one out. Runner at first now with two outs. And unfortunately, when you go on contact and the ball like that is hit, it's not even close. And third baseman Suarez made a, a good throw. Catcher Bernhardt caught the ball, then blocked the plate, which you're allowed to do, gave the runner the space, but then able to put every whole body really in front of the plate to block him off. So here's Buncey. Simeon runs, pitches inside, throw to second base, not in time. Simeon made a pretty good jump. He swipes a bag. Well, that's the fourth stolen base of the year for Marcus Simeon. Which means now that he can walk Muncie or pitch carefully to him. With the pitcher coming up. So, really, it's not a bad ploy by Marcus Simeon because it does get the pitcher out of the way in this inning. And they're going to put Muncie on, opening up the first base with the stolen base. So, if Simeon did not steal, then the goal for the Reds get the eighth place hitter out, have Simeon or uh, Sonny Gray leading off the next inning. But this way, at least with the stolen base, the A's take care of that. So that is ball four to Muncie. So see if Sonny can come through. Ryan Price is going to jog out to the mound. <laughs> Ryan Price, a good pitching coach. Now the manager and that jog might be to say can you get through this inning. Do you have enough left. And it would be a shock if he said no. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes a manager could say I'm going to look at his eyes and see what his eyes look like how he feels but when a manager jogs to the mound it's not to make a move normally it's to find out exactly how the pitcher feels. Red's bullpen is in deep left center field. Well, there it is. So here's Sonny Gray. Simeon at second, Muncie at first. Outfield shallow. Sonny takes the first pitch strike. Fastball from Sclafani. I think everybody in the park knows that this is the last batter for Di Sclafani, and he wants to try to get him out to walk off the mound with 
an opportunity for his club to come back. Figure if he loses Son of Gray, he's going to be out of the game anyway. Do you remember De Stefani starting against the A's in Miami mm -hmm. when he was with the Marlins? Yeah. Came over in the Matt Latos trade from Miami to Cincinnati. And it was the non-sunny day, wasn't it? Because Gray pitched on the Saturday. After losing or missing a complete start, they wanted to rest him a little bit. He got four runs, I want to say, in the first inning. Didn't last through four. It ended up going 13 or 14. Big Nate Fryman. Nate. Game winner. Right. Big Nate flew in. Had some coffee on Sunday morning. Chili, let's go hit some. <laughs> Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So the A strand a pair, and we are headed to the bottom of the sixth inning. Reds still looking for their first hit. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Ace Baseball and CSN California is brought to you by PG&E. Together, building a better California. One nothing the A's lead the Reds it's the bottom of the sixth inning. That's the American Queen. That's a biggie. So the story right now is the A's with a one nothing lead and Sonny Gray is yet to allow a hit through the first five innings. He'll face Holt Barnhart and probably a pinch hitter for Di Scalfani. Well, when Dee Sclafani got out of the inning, that enabled Brian Price really to pinch it for him, not have to make a double switch. So all that probably worked in the conversation that he had, especially facing Sonny Gray, who probably more concerned about what he's doing on the mound than at the plate. And right now, 56 pitch coming up. And it's a strike to Tyler Holt. Tyler Holt. Grounded out to third in the third. Billy Hamilton on the seven day concussion disabled list. So Holt playing in center field. The Rays are leading the Astros four to nothing. That game in the fourth inning. McCullers and Andres, two pitchers in that one. Astros, the only AL West team that is underway. Close pitch, three and one. 
Said he has walked one. That's the only base runner for the Reds. It was a one out walk to Votto in the fourth inning. And all fastballs in this at bat to Holt. Five fastballs. Four in, that is four fifth coming up but. Three of the four out of the strike zone. And that one fouled off Stephen Vogt. Stephen Vogt take it right down the middle of fastball. Kind of the lower part of his mask. Watch the mask. And the head goes back. And somehow he's able to say give me another baseball. Huh. So a full count to Holt. And he drives one toward right center, but Coco was shaded that way, and he's got it. So Holt, pretty good at bat, but he's retired. And here's Tucker Barnhart. Still some daylight, huh? Yeah. Summer must be here. Barnard struck out in the third, one of two strikeouts for Gray. And there's a base hit. So that's the first hit of the game. And it belongs to Tucker Barnard, a line single to the left. So into the stretch now for Sonny Gray. And we're going to get a pinch hitter. Oh, that's pretty good hitting. Fastball away. Didn't try to pull it. Kurt Young just to go out to remind him about this hitter. As Kurt Young, Stephen Vogt, Sonny Gray with their own little meeting to go over the opposing hitters. So De Scafani is done. Six innings gives up just the one earned run. Got him out of some trouble. Eight hits through six innings. So now the A's have to be concerned because they had an opportunity to top half the inning with a lot of base runners, a lot of action, but came up with nothing. Here's Steve Selsky, the pitch hitter. First pitch drops in first strike. Selsky, one for two. Just brought up from AAA Louisville on Wednesday. He was with the Reds earlier this year. Lays off the slider. So now it's Blake Wood who is up. It'll be on to the Reds bullpen. Big series tonight starting in Seattle with the Rangers and the Mariners going at it. Remember last week the Rangers swept Seattle in Arlington. They turn around this weekend to play in Seattle. It'll be Holland and Iwakuma the matchup. That one driven to right. Muncie's there. So a hard hit ball but right into the glove of Muncie. It's been a handful of line drives tonight but the A's have had a man there. But sometimes you could say great defensive alignment but other times you could say hit him right at him. Yeah that's kind of what has happened tonight. So the defense has been there. Coco has been busy in center field. Now Sunday left last Sunday's game. The two to one lead got a no decision and the A's bullpen kind of fell apart giving up four runs after he departed. And pitch count can usually get to a pitcher quicker than anything. But if you've got an opportunity to control your own destiny might as well. As long as you can that is pitch counts pretty good tonight for yeah, that's right? great. Actually he's three away from all he threw in the game last Sunday and he's already in the extra inning. 
facing Zach Cozart. Cozart has grounded out and then he hit a line drive that Lowry made a diving backhanded play on. So he is 0 for 2. And now the count 2 and 0 to Zach Cozart. Playing every day and having a very nice season for the Reds. Nine home runs, 25 RBIs. He's got 16 doubles. And you know, Kipe in the All Star voting, which it's in place now and taking place. And if you're not playing on a winning team, you're not going to get a lot of attention. Nope. And teammates like the fact that Cozart. Valencia has it. He'll go to second. Side retired. So Sonny Gray gives up his first hit, but nothing else. Seventh inning coming up. One nothing. A's lead. Baseball from June the 17th to the 19th. That's next weekend. As Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, and the Los Angeles Angels invade the Coliseum for an action-packed three-game series. Friday's game will feature post-game fireworks. A Sunday's contest is the perfect Father's Day gift for family time. Get your tickets now at athletics.com/tickets. The Angels from Anaheim. They don't want to be called Angels from Anaheim. Just Los Angeles Angels. That's all. We'll call them whatever we that's want to right. call them. That's right. right. From Anaheim. That's where they play. <laughs> All right, when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and repair expert. So Blake Wood comes in. 30th appearance, 4 and 1, 3.99 ERA. He likes his fastball upwards of 97, 98. So a bullpen. Somebody throws as hard as he does, you have to wonder, but he can throw the heater. And Coco jumps on the first pitch, drives it toward Duval. Duval backing up front of the wall makes the catch. So good start though for Anthony DiScalfani. Six innings, eight hits, one run, three walks and two strikeouts. But he leaves trailing one to nothing. Good job on the name by the way. He did a great job. DiScalfani? Yeah. But you got it down. Yeah. Practicing all day. <laughs> it's not an easy name to, to say often. <laughs> I want to call him AD. The big right hander. <laughs> <laughs> so the the Reds bullpen has an ERA of 6.71 this year. Great. Right. That is the eighth highest ERA in baseball history after wow. pitching 200 innings as a group. That's that's the problem. Look at the next closest Texas at four point eight three. Wow. So that's almost two runs higher than the next closest. 
So it has just been a giant, giant problem for the Reds. And yeah. it snowballs because now everybody yeah. knows about it. Well, it, and it, you start thinking, <laughs> you know what? Just stay close because we'll beat them late. And that was a surprising thing last night when Adam Wainwright was taken out relatively early in the game in a 2 2 game. I think the bases were loaded or a couple of guys on and they put Peralta in the pinch hit and I think after six innings Wainwright was out and the discussion was well why wouldn't they just wait because the bullpen was coming in. They ended up winning anyway by a run. But the. Reds have not had a lot of success. As a matter of fact, zero in interleague play this year. Haven't won yet. This is their eighth game in interleague play while the A's are playing just their third. Inside with that fastball at 97 miles an hour. Just overthrew it. You throw as hard as he does. That's why it was saying throw 97, but give me 94 with some location. And that was a 97 overthrown out of the strike zone. Lowry is 0 for 3. And he's going to get the walk. So a one out base runner. Well, that is the fourth walk the A's have received tonight, and the previous three have not scored. Last inning, they had a couple of walks. Matter of fact, a leadoff walk to Chris Davis, but he was thrown out at the plate on a contact play. So that brings up Vote, who is two for three. Strikeout, Homer, and a single. So his average up to 277. Vote was rolling along in an 11-game hitting streak when he arrived in Milwaukee, but he went 0 for 7 in that series against the Brewers. There's nobody hit in Milwaukee. <laughs> right. These had eight total hits <laughs> yeah. in the two games at Miller Park and four runs total. Tonight they got eight hits in six innings. It's the Reds no hit by Jake Arrieta. It's the Reds. Who was, I, he no hit somebody earlier. And whoever it was somebody had a hit streak and said it ended. With a no hitter no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to end. Generally that happens. Have the Reds been no hit this year? It was Jake. Yeah. Okay. Who said he's going to pitch another one this year? At home. I wouldn't disagree I with know. him. No, he's pretty good. Finally lost his first regular season game since last year. Outside, and now it's two and one. Now the Cubs roll along. Forty-one and seventeen. Winning percentage is seven oh seven. Cubs with the best record in the National League and all of baseball. The best record in the American League belongs to the Texas Rangers. Not close, and now it's three and one. Okay, if you talk about playing a team a certain time of the year, think back to the beginning of the season for the A's. They saw the Chicago White Sox. The A's lost three out of four. Mm -hmm. Two guys, one named Jimmy Rollins, hit a home run the second game in the ninth inning to win the game. Matt Latos pitched on Thursday. Six innings of one hit ball. Chris Coglin, the only guy getting the hit, hmm. both of them been designated. Yeah. Because all of a sudden the White Sox, it looked like both teams in Chicago were going to run away from the with the divisions. Now the White Sox are playing tonight 30 and 30. Yep. It's incredible. Yeah, that was a quick turnaround because yeah. everybody was talking about the White Sox in April. Yeah. But now they have lost seven in a no, they've lost 12 out of 15 wow. in Chicago. But yeah, Jimmy Rollins. Was just DFA today. Go. Yeah. And Matt Latos, uh, they were talking. I mean, he pitched so well that they kept him. And it's a kid, Fulmer, that they have in the minor leagues they were wanting to bring up, but uh, I think they brought somebody else up. Shortstop to uh, take over for Rollins, anyway. Well, when the White Sox were in early, we said Jimmy Rollins was just kind of filling the hole because the White Sox had. Best prospect runner goes. The ball's popped up. Shallow left. Duvall in. Duvall will make the catch. So Chris gets back, or Lowry, excuse me, gets back. But Tim Anderson, the young yep. shortstop for the White Sox, he's their best prospect, and 
It was just a matter of time before he was going to get to the big leagues, and that's what happened. They want him obviously to play every day, and that cost Jimmy Rollins his job. Rollins, 45 hits away from 2,500 mm. in his career, so I would think somebody would grab yeah. him. But I think with Jimmy Rollins, he, he wanted to go to Chicago because he knew he was going to play shortstop. That's right. And at this point now, I think if Jimmy Rollins could play second base, well, now I think he's a valuable guy for somebody, a good team that's in a pennant race. But can he play second base? You know, that's yeah. the question. Or even third base. I mean, I, yeah. I just don't know that a contending team's going to have a shortstop spot for Jimmy Rollins to play. Let's see. He was only hitting 200. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. And Valencia chases that one. The interesting thing, we, there's always that battle between North and South Side Chicago. Cubs playing so well, they did it last year going to postseason, and White Sox looked like it was going to be a magical season. So panic sets in. Yep. They start making moves, and a couple of veterans DFA'd and. See what they can do to acquire players. Yeah, and they made the big shields trade, obviously. That's right. He didn't do well the first game. The White Sox tonight, interesting weekend series. They're at home. They're playing the Royals. They're winning three to two in the fourth inning. But the White Sox, as I mentioned, have lost 12 out of 15. The Royals have lost seven in a row. And the Royals are 30 and 29. They're not playing well at all. So two teams. Especially the Royals, you just kind of figure they're going to get hot again, but they're also pretty banged up, and they have really not been playing great. They just had a pitcher suspended for nine games. When he should have got suspended. Well, that. basically it's two starts, yeah. and with a pitcher you have to do that. One start or five games, you know, they can manipulate the starting spot. No, I agree, at least that. Yeah. Foul tip, Valencia strikes out, so Lowry's walked, but the A's do nothing with it. We have reached the seventh inning stretch in Cincinnati. One nothing, A's lead. Know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai, and it's tonight at 10:30 on our sister station CSN Bay Area. It's a busy night, folks. Game four highlights: Warriors, Cavs. Of course, the Warriors up two games to one in Cleveland. Of course, we'll have a full report from Cleveland. And don't forget about the Sharks. They get ready for Game six at the Shark Tank, and that is Sunday. And they have to win. They're down three games to two. So Ben Aren't, Fareed will take care of that. Aren't the Warriors back on Monday night at the Coliseum? Yeah, game five will be Monday night at the Coliseum. So busy time at the Coliseum. <laughs> Sunny days have returned. Indeed. Five innings in Houston on Sunday, and he's been very good tonight. Just one hit. But he is going right at the heart of the order, though. This is this group we talk about, Ray Votto, Phillips, Bruce, if anybody gets on, Duvall. So this will be a entertaining inning. 
Sonny Gray goes at the heart of the lineup. Votto one of two base runners for the Reds tonight. Votto that time verbally asked for time before he stepped out and Phil and Colbert gave it to him. So they take a little bit extra time. One one pitch to Votto. Votto drives with the left field. Davis back. Davis near the wall and Davis stumbled a little bit but makes the catch and then bangs into the wall. So another fairly hard hit ball but. A nice play by Chris Davis. On opposite field and Votto. Waits a long time as a result he walks a lot but at the warning track Chris Davis you're right he stumbled right there and able to bang into the wall brace himself. So Joey Votto said those batting gloves are not working I'm going to throw them in the stands. He must have watched Miguel Tejada. Yeah so I think it took a whole. Yeah he threw everybody's <laughs> batting gloves. <laughs> First pitch to Phillips just a touch low. Indians and the Angels will play later on on the West Coast. Kluber and Santiago the matchup there. Indians playing great in first place in the central. There's a base hit right up the middle for Phillips. Interesting note here on Sonny Gray and the curveball. Look at the velocity. Okay, so velocity down a little bit on his curveball. And you say, well, does that make a difference? Well, the, the percentage of swinging strike says it does make a difference. Yeah. Throwing it just a little bit harder. And his last start, it certainly paid off. Kev, I think you could just spell out the word keeping it down or down because the curveball down, what's the extra velocity? Hitters have to start their swing, and a lot of times we'll swing and miss. But high in the air, but in the ballpark. Davis waits. Davis has it. Phillips is going to try for a second. Now he stops and he goes back. Well, Phillips is in the starting blocks at first. Well, and it's a good move by Phillips. Yes, it is. He started, looked like he's going all the way, and you know, he could put on the brakes with the throw going in the second. Still plenty of time to get back. See, I wonder, Ray, too, is, is if is if you're Phillips there and you take off and you're obviously the ball's right yeah. looking. Wonder if you could almost see if if the throw in is going to be offline. That's a good point. Yeah. If you have the right angle, you can. Now, Davis was in the left center a little bit, so maybe not a great angle for Phillips. But if you see it's off, just keep going. Yeah. Here's Duvall. First pitch is a strike. Duvall has popped to second and grounded to third. Chris Davis did something very important as an outfielder. He got behind the ball, and Phillips saw that. And Chris Davis, who does not have a particularly strong arm, got the throw back in quickly, and as a result, kept Phillips at first. Vote has it scooped by him, so a big 90 feet there. Been an issue with Sonny Gray this year in the wild pitches. Yeah. That was not a curveball or fastball. It's 90 miles per hour. It's like a cutter. And Stephen and well, it's effectively Stephen Vote McBride. Is he, when you got a hard pitch like that in the dirt, it's going to bite because it's usually a breaking ball. Yeah, that's not surprising. Ten wild pitches and. Phillips doesn't go to second possibly would have been thrown out if he tried instead he gets there anyway on a wild pitch. Now Duvall becomes a big hitter. On deck is Eugenio Suarez. So one and one the count to Duvall. 17 home runs. And that one's ripped past Valencia down the third baseline. Phillips is going to score, and this game is tied here in the bottom of the seventh inning. A huge two odd hit for Adam Duvall. 
And you're going to see a location type. Unfortunately, the location that we saw, curveball stayed up, a hanger, and it crushed it. Did not have the biting curve down in the zone. The location before had been great. This ball up and hit hard. And it looked too like it stayed down a little yep. bit on Valencia. Would have been a terrific play. So Duvall gets his 41st RBI, and now you got to try to keep this thing a tie. As Suarez steps in, and he bounces one in the hole. Simeon has it. He'll throw to third, and Duvall slides. He's safe. That's the only play Simeon had. So it'll be a base hit. Great play by Marcus Simeon on a couple of things. Number one, keeping the ball from going to left field because it would have scored the go-ahead run. And then to quickly throw to Danny Valencia, if the ball had rounded the back at all, he's going to be out. He actually slid in to third base, thinking that the throw was going to go there. It did. By sliding, no chance for him to round the back. Some base runners will round it like they think the ball is in the outfield, but smart play, good play by Marcus Simeon. Did not have to leave his feet, but kept the ball from going into the outfield. So you're Tyler Holt. Three hits in the inning. And that one bounces away from Volt, and the Reds are going to take the lead on a wild pitch. The ball went into the A's dugout. Well, you put up the note 10 wild pitches and the ball under the glove of Stephen Volt. And once it got under the glove, it hit maybe the umpire and headed over towards the dugout. Wow. So Suarez is now at second base. Good breaking ball there, and the count is one and one. You start looking to both these wild pitches yep. very very costly in exactly this inning. Right. I think back you almost wish Phillips to try to go to second. <laughs> he probably would have been out yeah. been out of the inning. He ended up there anyways yeah. right. And here's the wild pitch that scored the go ahead run. Yeah, Steven didn't really get all the way down to the ground with the with his glove and. That probably. Could have gone more than, than yeah. Could know, have been if, a pass ball if he had put his glove on the yeah. ground and maybe just scooted under too quickly that he did not get his catcher's mitt down on the ground. So the count is one and two. And that one in the dirt, but a swing and a miss. Flip to first side retired. So a tough inning for Sonny Gray. Couple of wild pitches that cost him. And the Reds take the lead. They score twice. So 2 1 Cincinnati after seven.
annual Ace Pride Night presented by Wells Fargo on Tuesday, June 14th. Join us as the Ace take on the Texas Rangers and purchase a special ticket that includes a Pride Rainbow headband. Partial proceeds from this event will benefit AIDS Project of the East Bay, Our Space, and Rainbow Community Center. For tickets and information, visit athletics.com slash pride. Now the Reds lead 2-1, to one, so that's a disappointing bottom of the seventh inning. So A's have work to do, and Davis will lead it off. Davis, Alonzo, Simeon, and Blake Wood stays in the game. He threw 18 pitches in the seventh, had a walk and a strikeout. And this one skied to center. Holt backs up. And Holt has it. That almost makes me think, Ray, that if you're Brian Price and you have all these problems with your bullpen and th there's not real defined roles, <laughs> if you got a guy who looks decent in the seventh inning, thank you. <laughs> go back out there for the eighth. That's right. Right? I mean, yeah. You're right. Who knows? Well, and, and I agree because I think as we have talked about before, you see a pitcher get four hitters out and then they take out for the fifth and then all of a sudden somebody comes in to give it up, you know, but you know the matchups at times are lefty righty righty lefty. Aren't really all that good all the time. Another drive to center. And another one that's going to stay in the ballpark. So two outs. So that's the big part of the ballpark obviously and the ball carries well here down the lines and even into the power alley especially in right field but and that's smart pitching the yeah. pitch away trying to get hitters in the case of the two lefties are righty and lefty and Sean Doolittle gets loose on the A's bullpen. Sonny Gray didn't throw that many pitches in the seventh inning but he may be finished for the night anyway. Marcus Simeon with one of the A's eight hits. A slider popped up foul. The attendance tonight here at the Great American Ballpark, 21,520. And a, just a beautiful night. The riverboat heading down the Ohio. So not a real big crowd, but. And strike three called. Simeon looked like he knew it. So that's a good inning for Blake Wood. At the bottom of the eighth coming up. Reds two, A's one. Game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 1 8 and 0 for the A's, 2 4 and 2 for the Reds. He's got the two runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sonny Gray's been good. Two wild pitches hurt him last inning. Di Stefani was very good. He's going to get a no decision. Steven Vogt with a home run for the A's, only run in this game. So again, the A's offense quiet and has been somewhat quiet on this road trip. Too quiet. Yeah. Really too quiet. 
So Sonny Gray back out there. Hey, that in itself is good that Sonny's back out just 83 pitches. And it's that last with a good slider, good breaking ball. Tucker Barnhart got the first hit in the game with one out in the sixth inning. He lined a base hit to left field. Vote cannot block that one. It rolls toward the on deck circle where. A pinch hitter, Kyle Waldrop. Now, seeing Grotty, the closer's warming up, so right now the A's trying to keep it at one. Boy, I say that a long time, but it's so true. You can bring the closer in with just a one run lead. One, two pitch swing and a miss. Barnard strikes out, and Sonny Gray picks up his fourth K. After breaking ball in the dirt, went back more to the fastball, a little cut action on it, but a couple of breaking balls to start, the breaking ball in the dirt. So here's Waldrop. He is the pinch hitter. Waldrop one hit in four at bats this year. Goes after the first pitch and rolls it foul. Waldrop, like Selsky, just brought up from the minor leagues. And just like Zelski was with them earlier this year. Seems like when the Reds make moves, they don't do just one. They do multiple moves in the same time. And that's a shot to right, and that's a hit. So a pinch hit single for Waldrop. That has to feel good coming off the bench. Stayed with three consecutive breaking pitches and this next one just kind of stayed up and you, ha you have to wonder Kipe if if there is a little fatigue setting in because this I mean the, the pitch counts OK it's not even 90 yet 69 is last start so 20 more but as they talk about it's going out sitting down mm -hmm. going out sitting down so this being the eighth inning really. No pitcher for the A's really has done this. Rich Hill went eight innings one time. That's the extent for any starting pitcher for the A's. And unfortunately, Rich is on the disabled list, but the fact they can go retroactive to his last start, then that's going to help expedite his time to get well. Right now, just trying to keep this at one run behind going into the ninth inning. Kozar taps it, and it's foul toward Valencia. So it will be a lefty Tony Singrani to pitch the ninth and the A's will have Muncie the pitcher spot and then Coco Crisp. Plenty of right handed hitters Smolinski Butler Fegley Landor and Billy Burns a switch hitter so you have options if you need to go to the bench with a lefty on the mound. And how about Butler pinch hitting and Landor fronting for him. It's possible. That's what we saw in Milwaukee yeah, sure. so it. I would say Butler will get the opportunity. We'll see what the skipper decides, but right now just trying to get into that situation, trading him by one. Oh, and two to Zach Cozart, who has grounded out twice and lined out. So the leadoff man, 0 for 3. Joey Votto will be next. Uh, 
On the ground, Simeon backhands. Fires to second for one. Lowry back to first. Not in time. Man, yeah, they may take a look at that. Bob Melvin saying, let's wait a second. High throw from Simeon to Lowry, but still, Lowry with a very strong arm. Got it to first base. They're going to take a look at it. And Bob Melvin, maybe he's going to make a move. Is looked like Cozart beat it. But Bob Melvin may be going to do little for Votto. So for the pinch hitter, Waldorf getting on base, it cost Sonny Gray the opportunity to get through the eighth inning. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair expert. So Doolittle coming in to face Votto with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. On Friday, June the 17th, join us for baseball movie fireworks presented by Ray Morgan Company. After the game against the Angels, our famous fireworks show will be set to the music from classic baseball movies, including The Natural, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, and many, many more. There's no better way to kick off summer than with A's baseball and fireworks, so visit athletics.com slash fireworks today. You understand they have fireworks tonight. Right here in Cincinnati. Good start for Sonny Gray. Five hits, two runs in seven and two thirds innings. And here's a good matchup Doolittle and Votto. And I'm sure Joey Votto knows the scatter report on Sean Doolittle. Lefty on lefty, fastball after fastball. Three for four and save opportunities, but pretty much now the, the setup. But one of closers, uh, several closers that Bob Melvin can go to when he wants to. Votto swings and misses 95 miles an hour. That's a challenge. <laughs> That's a challenge. Isn't this great? I mean, this is this is wonderful. Votto knows what Doolittle is going to throw, and Doolittle is going to throw exactly what he throws best. Well, now Votto spreads out big time, chokes up a little bit more, and he skies one to left field. Davis back near the wall, and he's got it. Wow. <laughs> How about choking up more? Choking <laughs> That's up. That's great. And spreading out, and he almost hit it out. So here we go, folks. Ninth inning coming up.
A's Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. So last shot for the A's as they trail the Reds two to one. And when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. Well, the Reds looking for a closer, and they're given the opportunity to Tony Singrani. He's got good stuff. Walks are a little bit high. He's called a sinker slider pitcher. And the right-handed pinch hitters that you mentioned, a couple are going to face off in this inning. Not Muncy, but it's going to be Smolensky for Muncy. And then Billy Butler in the on-deck circle, so they'll have righty-righty switch. Coco to bat right-handed, so opportunities for the A's. And the fact that the A's were able to not allow the Reds to score in the eighth inning, so it's a one-run deficit and trying to do something here. So Smolensky. Hitting for Muncie. First pitch is right there outside corner 94 miles an hour. That was not a sinker. That was a four seam <laughs> fastball. No sink in there. No, no, there's nothing there. A little pop up. Votto hustles over, can't get it. Singrani looks like he's one of those windups where it's kind of a slow windup, but then he kind of jumps at you. It was a starter when he got to the big leagues, he had a little bit of success as a starter, but last year went to the bullpen. High fastball, hit foul into the upper deck. Well, you're right. Very slow and delivered, but there's that stretch out of the windup. That's what Sonny Gray had been doing. Seeing Grotty doing the same thing where he kind of stands with both feet close together on the slab, but it is a windup. Actually, it's a stretch. <laughs> well, I guess he it's changes about the same, back really. and forth. That just has to be concerned when he gets a runner on base and the A's are hopeful that that is the case. One two pitch again fouled into the upper deck. Smolensky well, could handle a fastball. And right now all he has seen in five pitches has been a fastball and Grani it's got a good one, so why not use it? Defense is straight up, outfield deep. Suarez, the third baseman, is hugging the line. Barnard, right the, side. Barnard, the catcher, staying inside, forcing his left handed pitcher to finish and staying in and maybe have a little discussion with his lefty now. Well, it's interesting. So you see the fastballs being fouled to the right mm -hmm. side. Doesn't mean that Smolinski can't get to it, but have a but he hasn't showed <laughs> right. them that he can yet. He does this time, shoots it to right field, and that's a base hit. Lead off single by Smolinski, and that's a pretty good at bat. Well, and to your point, because I know what you're thinking, don't throw him anything but fastballs if he's not pulling the ball. And Smolensky protecting with a couple of strikes, maybe against a possible slider, but got a fastball away after inside from Bernhardt, goes away and just really it's Singrani providing the power on this fastball location outside, and Smolensky just took it that direction. Almost seems like if the pitch was a foot in, he would have probably fouled it in the same spot, exactly. but it was out and he just went with it. So here's Butler. 
Butler hitting in the pitcher spot and he hits a high fly ball toward right. Bruce over. Bruce has it. Gets it back in quickly and that's the first out. So Butler went after the first pitch. He's retired. And now Coco Chris will hit. Coco for the first time tonight will hit from the right side. He's 11 for 44 as a right handed hitter this year. So he's. Average wise he's been. Better from the right side this year. But tonight. He had good swings left handed he was two for four. Defense remains. Pretty straight up. Phillips cheating towards second. Holt in center just slightly shaded toward left center. And when in doubt play straight up. Yep. Especially. With the kind of fastball Singrani is throwing. There's a strike on the fastball at 94 miles an hour. As if you shift expecting a hitter to pull a 95 96 mile an hour fastball and usually the shifts. I think only Julio Franco as I remember it's opposite shift where they shifted to the right field for him because <laughs> He was a great opposite field hitter, but more than anything, the shifts, it's usually to the pool side. So the A's have the tying run on. Lowry will be next. Coco watches it. Close pitch a bit outside to even the count at one and one. He's got their only run in the third inning on votes home run. The Reds got two in the bottom of the seventh. Sonny Gray was one out away from getting out of that inning, but he could not do it. Well, I can't say he has a clock on Sangrani. Maybe talking about. Smolenski running. He has good speed, but really the left handed pitcher, Singrani, is looking right at the runner. It makes it difficult to get any kind of a jump. Mark Kotze, a very good player. He has a stopwatch, so he is checking the time of Singrani releasing the ball to the plate. Just see how quick or how slow he is. High leg kick, that's slow. Coco fouls it straight back. Another fastball at 95 miles an hour. So you gauge it right you gauge that leg kick. Yeah. Well but that time he kind of quick pitch with the high leg kick but quick pitched. And by doing that it really kind of froze. The runner at first in Smolenski but. If you alter your approach to the plate and delivery. And as a, a base runner even if you think about stealing it's tough to figure out what he's going to do. So the count even two and two. Here's the pitch hit hard toward third out at second dug out at first and that's the ball game. So Coco Crisp grounds into a 5 4 3 double play. And the Cincinnati Reds take game one of the three game series. It's tough to go around the horn with a double play especially with Coco Crisp running but he threw it hard. Or he hit it hard threw it hard that. Over to second to Phillips and a scoop at first base by the Gold Glove first baseman Votto. Sangrani gets the job done. So the A's have lost a season high six consecutive games, and Sonny Gray pitches well, but Sonny will take the loss. So time of game tonight: two hours and 37 minutes. The attendance was 21,520. Final score: the Cincinnati Reds two. And the Oakland A's won. You've been watching A's baseball on CSN California. It's part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's post game live with Mindy Bach and Carney Lane.